Now that we have Python successfully installed on our computers, the next thing we want to do is to go ahead and install the various Python tools or frameworks we would be using to build this application. And the first one we want to install is Flux. All right. And right here is my terminal window on Git Bash. You could use terminal from your VS Code or you could just open your terminal window or make sure you are in the folder where we would be building this project. So you have to make sure you are in this folder. You can see it's the event registration website folder. So however you're, you're deciding to open your terminal, that's fine, but make sure you are in the right folder, the event registration website folder, wherever you locate it. So this is my entire location of the folder. But before we go ahead and build install flux there's something very important we have to first of all install and that is called a virtual environment a virtual environment is like a separate place where python if your your system is going to reserve for you for this project so everything you do inside this virtual environment is not going to be shared with people outside the virtual environment and that's what we want to use to build our full start application so just type this command to install your virtual environment. Python, iPhone Python M, virtual environment, VENV, and then the name of this virtual environment, we're going to call it my ENV. That is my environment, and then press enter on your terminal here. And once you do that, you should wait for some time for the virtual environment from Python to finish installing, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, our Python virtual environment has finished installing. To confirm it's there, just type this command ls on your, on your terminal, and you should see that we have this folder, my env. The next thing we want to do is to activate the virtual environment. So use this command if you're using Bash or Windows, my env slash scripts and then activate slash activate. So just this command, the way it is here, you want to use this exact command to um, activate your virtual environment. And then that's it. You have your virtual environment activated. Okay, so once your virtual environment is activated, you should see this bracket here that says my env. From here on, we can, no matter how you clear your screen, to clear your screen, by the way, you just type clear and it will clear. But no matter how you clear your screen, now that we've got our virtual environment activated, you should see it up above here. The next thing we want to do is to go ahead and install Flux. So for that, we'll be using a Python program called pip. So pip install, just write Flux. Um, just pip install Flux right here. Uh, once you do that, Flux should start installing. So like we did before, we are going to wait for Flux to finish installing. It's giving us all the data. So it's installing various packages of dependencies inside Flux. And we're just waiting for the last piece of information, which says successful. All right, everything was successful and that's it. So I'm going to clear my screen again by typing clear and we have Flux installed. Now that Flux is installed, we can leave this terminal environment and then go back to our VS Code environment. Now back on our VS Code folder, you can see that we have this new folder in my ENV and that is because this is the my this folder is where we are going to be running everything. Now here, we are going to be creating another folder, right? So just click here. You can see where my arrow is. Click on this button, this, this plus button here. Now there are two buttons. The first one is a file button. The second is a folder button. We are going to create a folder and this folder, we are going to call it app. So click on it and press enter. Now, yours should appear exactly the way mine is on the screen. So we've created this app folder. And inside this app folder, we are going to create a file. So all you have to do, right click while your cursor is hovering around this app folder. Right click it and create new file. 
Now in this new file, we're going to create our first one and we're going to call it init underscore underscore dot pi, right? So two underscores, underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi, right? That is what you should have. Let's make my screen a little bigger so that you can see it very clearly, right? So this is it underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi this is exactly how your your file should be and it should be inside this app folder so if you have this it means that you have done a great job now in this underscore underscore init dot pi we would be writing our first lines of code and that is going to be what we have here that says from flux in ports Flask. This is exactly what we are going to be writing for our first lines of code. From flax, import flax. Now, this flax will be in capital later. This other flax would be in small letters. And the next thing we want to do is to come down and write this next one. So we have to create a flax instance and we'll set it to app, which is the name of our app. And then we're going to write flux, open bracket, underscore, underscore, name. You can see underscore, underscore, name here. So I'm just going to click it. This is going to set a flux instance. Basically, it is the name of the application package, which is app. So we're, we're saying this project we want to build is an app. It's a web app. So after this project, you could start calling yourself an application developer. That's how big what we are doing is. Now, after this, we can come back here. Uh, we can leave this code like this for now and come back here, right, from our left-hand side. I'm going to close this app drop down. And here, we are going to be creating a file. We we'll call this file run dot pi so yours should exactly be like mine like this and then we'll create our next file and we'll call it config dot pi we will have these two files the run dot pi and the config dot pi now in the config dot pi let's start with the config dot pi so come to the config dot pi and we'll be creating a class just use this one here, class, just like this, and then equal to config, not equal to just class config, and then put your semicolon. Then press enter, and right here we would have to say debug equal to true. Now I'm going to explain this later on why we did this, but for now just do this debug equal to true. And once you have this one, we can come now to the run.py. Run.py, and in run.py, we can now have these lines of code. So, write along with me from app, now imports app. And the next one is if name is equals underscore underscore main. So if underscore underscore name is equal underscore underscore main, we want to do this next. And what's that? We want to say app the run. Okay, the equals has to be double equal like this. And then we want to come here and say app dot run. And then put a bracket. All right. So we'll be using this app dot run, this method app dot run. And this would help us to run this application on our local development server. So while we are going to be running this application, it's simply because of this app does run with code just here. All right, now why do we have this first line from app import app? Remember, we have this folder called app and we are saying from app, inside this app, look for app and you can see where app is. So from app import app, then we have our very first lines of code. Now, now let's go back to our app init.py. You can see where I am, app init.py. And let's get our next config. So we are going to import from, 
we're going to do some importations now. The first one, the second one, is that from config, remember we created this file called config. So from config, we are going to import that class of config we had earlier set here. So if I come to the config.py, remember we call the class config. That's exactly what we are importing from here, from config, import config. And once we do that, we can now use this import by saying app.config dot from objects from objects brackets open and then config. All right. So that's all. Now we've called these two files, which is very, very good. And we are all set to start running our applications. All right. So the next thing we want to do, we have created our flags, we've created our config, we've, we've called them, we're getting the setup correctly. We want to see if our code is running. Remember we said that the run.py would help us to run our code correctly. So we want to see if our code will run. And so for that, what I would be doing is to come here and just quickly create something that I will try to try to run. Okay, so let's create something and I'm going to create an at this at sign here, this decorator at app.routes. And we're going to put a slash like this and let's say def home. For now, just follow along and I will explain it later. And then let us return hello world. All right, this is all we'll have for now. I just want to see that our configuration was successful and we have something we can run. So return hello world. And let's go ahead and check if what we've just done makes sense to the computer. Now, how do we do that? We'll go back to our terminal. List out what you have. You can see that app folder we created, the config.py, the run.py. Very great. To run our code, we would use this command now, python run.py. Remember, we created this file called run.py. That's exactly what we'll be using to run our code. And hit enter. And let's see if everything we've done so far is a success. So it says it's serving Flux app on app all of this. It's asking us to click on this link here to be able to see our file. So I'm just going to click on it or you can copy it. Whatever case, you can copy it. Just right click, copy, and then we can go to our Chrome. So after copying it, we paste it in our browser, just like this. And when we run our file, we see the hello be with hooray, success. If you have this kind of result as I do right now, you can give yourself a round of applause. It's not easy to be to be successful so far. All right, if you have this kind of result like I do, one thing you can do is please like and subscribe to this channel, right? And let's go back and see what we have. When we refresh this, we say, hello, be wave, please like and subscribe to this channel. All right, so, so far, so good. We have the success. Now, what does this app, the routes mean here? Route is the location, the place where it's pointing to, where it's like routing to. So, for example, if I come here and say home, you would have noticed that in different websites we have like things like um, um, you could have one to seven, you could have slash login. Have you ever seen that in any website? Or maybe a register or maybe a course, right? So you can see different kind of routes there. Now, in these routes, 
So the slash cost is the cost route. And if it's the login, it's the login route. If it's the register, it's the register route. If it's the dashboard, it's the dashboard route. But in our code, you can look at this and say, hey, previously we gave it no routes. So what does this mean? It means default, right? When you hit the, the place you land, your landing page, your home page, by default, it's going to it's going to have no routes. However, you can also give it routes. For example, we can say slash home. Now, if I hit enter now, you're going to see that we have absolutely nothing on our screens. And that is correct. We get a 404 because this is not so far, we've not called this route. We we've only we've we've only tried to access this route, but we've not created the route in our code. So to create the route in our code, I can come here and say slash home. And if we do slash home there and run here back, you see, when we refresh our screen, we say, hello, B-Wave, please like and subscribe. So I hope you understand routing. And that should be, that's for routing.